Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays on The Pig in Perspective, and this week we're talking about one of my favorite things, labels. This week's topic comes from Rachel, who read an article where the author had an opinion about the use of the term soft polytheism, saying that that term doesn't really make sense. Read the full topic in the description so you can hear her words, but it's about the term soft polytheism and how this author didn't think it made sense, and they suggested some different alternatives such as facet or aspect theism for people who believe that all deities are aspects or facets of a one deity, and Jungian, Jungian, or archetypal theism for those with a symbolic belief in deity. So there's a few things that I want you to go look at, read, familiarize yourselves with before you watch this video. Yes, I'm giving you pre-homework. So first, read the topic from Rachel in the description. And the other three things are in the description as well. There's a link to the Wikipedia page that is the definition of theism, and that includes a list of definitions of a whole bunch of different types of theism, including monotheism, polytheism, and all different types thereof, or various types thereof, if not all of them, pantheism and panentheism, deism, autotheism, and different value judgment theisms. Also check out the see also section, which links to animism, atheism, deism, eetism? I, I don't know how to pronounce that, liberal theism, non-theistic religions, open theism, etc. Check that out, at least that page, if you don't go to all of the other pages. The second thing is a blog that I posted on my witchy stuff blog in December of last year called Oh My Gods, and it was my views on deity. I want you to read that before you listen to this, ideally if you have the time, because that was me kind of talking about my beliefs of deity without using the labels and kind of describing why I don't feel that any specific labels necessarily fit, because there's a lot of in-between areas where you could be. And that blog post links to two different videos at the end of it, but one of those I am also linking in the description for you. It is a video that I did for Pagan Perspective years ago while I was at college called Definitions and Multiple Theisms, where I defined a bunch of these different types of theism as well, such as omnitheism and other things that are not listed in the Wikipedia page that I'm linking for you. Once you're familiar with all that stuff, talking about the topic. So, theism, belief in deity, belief in the existence of deity, but belief in deity. And I think there are kind of two things that we talk about or tell other people about when we talk about our views as theists or not, or however we relate to that. One is, how many gods do you believe in? One deity is monotheism, two deities, duotheism, many deities, polytheism. There's a separate thing, though. There is, in what way do you believe in deity? And that's where things like hard and soft, which are terms meaning literal or symbolic, views of deity come in. And things like archetypal, stuff like that. So there's really two things we're talking about. We're talking about how many deities do you believe in, if any. So none, one, two, multiple, how many, and in what way. How do you believe in them? What do you believe they are? How do you relate to them? So those are different things that are being answered by this terminology, which, number one, is a lot to expect out of a word, okay? It just is. And you know I like words. So as I mentioned, and in the Wikipedia post you'll see, there's lots of different types. There's deism, there's atheism, there's non-theism, pantheism, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I loved Rich's video this week. I think it's just awesome that it's such good timing in his path right now with things that he's kind of figuring out about his path. And I think he said it really well when he said, like, that's just, those aren't things that he needs to be worrying about right now because there's different, you know, he's just getting onto the polytheism level at all, and then you're throwing all these other things at him that he doesn't need to be worrying about, right? I think you said it perfectly, Rich. That was great. And I really look forward to everyone else's videos this week as well. I think a lot of you knowing my videos from the past about this kind of subject, this stuff, could probably answer this from my point of view. I think that a bigger problem than people using the incorrect labels for their path, quote-unquote, a bigger problem is people creating 
so many different labels, many of which mean practically the same thing, and then it becoming so confusing because people are told or otherwise feel that they, for some reason, cannot use the terms that already exist. And sometimes it's because that term isn't exactly right, because we don't all fit in boxes. Sometimes you have to have multiple things or you have to have an in-between label. So there's that. But there are also a lot of cases where people say you're not allowed to call yourself that because XYZ. And then that leads to people who believe the same exact thing creating a new label, which makes them sound more separate than they actually are. And that, I think, is a big problem. Another thing that I think would be something to be upset about is people using widely and obviously incorrect terminology, such as a Buddhist who wants nothing to do with Buddha or the teachings of the Buddha, or a Norse pantheist who really more prefers the Roman gods, or a Christian who doesn't follow the teachings of Christ. That could happen, I bet. Or a witch who doesn't practice witchcraft. Like, those are places where you could be like, I think you're using the wrong label there. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely times where people have messaged me and talked about their path or talked about what they wanted to talk about, or whatever, and they've told me things that don't really match up with what I know about the terms they're talking about. So generally what I say is, what source are you using? And I ask them, how have you come across this label? Why do you think this label is the one that you want to use? Because if they're using it, there's probably a reason, right? And there are times when I've thought, eh, that's, that's probably not the best label for you to be using, but that's not my call. It's still their decision. So I think a big problem is people thinking that they can tell other people what to call their own path, or assuming that you know someone else's belief so fully that you know what is incorrect for them. So, to just illustrate how difficult this is, if you haven't read the blog first, um, even if you have, now we're going to do this other thing. I am totally stealing this idea from several reclaiming rituals that I have done recently, where we have worked with actual written things, and holding things, and letting things go. And I have Brendan to thank for re-inspiring that, because they mentioned something that they might be doing in their video this week. So anyway, to illustrate it, here are some things that you could use to label my belief in deity. So this is the blog with no labels. This is all the labels. Are you ready? You could call me a theist. You could also call me a deist, depending on how I feel about whether deity has control over things in the universe or interferes or, you know, I don't know how I feel about that so much. Um, I think there are other things that have to do with deism, but that's the big one that stood out to me from the Wikipedia article. So you, you could call me either of these things. However, depending on your definition of existence, you could also call me an atheist an atheist pagan. Some people do use that term in place of something else that you could call me a soft polytheist, or a symbolic polytheist, or an archetypal polytheist, or whatever qualifier you want to put in front of it, this sort of polytheist. Some people have a symbolic view of deity and refer to it as atheistic paganism. You could call me either of those things. You could also definitely call me a pantheist, because I believe that my highest power that I answer to, uh, that I believe exists, is the universe. And I believe that deity is in everything, and the universe is, you know, interconnected with everything, and that energy, deity is part of that, and we are part of that. That is pantheism. You could also call me a panentheist, which is slightly different. You can go read the definitions, but it's pantheism, but with a little extra. It's pantheism, but not only is deity everything in the universe, but it's also outside of the universe. And that N section, the little extra bit, is the part where I am a soft polytheist. That's where that comes in. However, you could also, possibly, potentially, some people could also refer to me as a non-theist, depending on their definitions of, again, of, of existence and and the role of deity and how I view deity, that's another label that potentially someone could give me. And because I don't really know, I just kind of, this is, I'm not saying that there aren't literally deities, I'm saying that's not the way I relate to them or worship them. That's not how I see them. But I don't, I'm not saying they're not. I don't know. 
So I'm agnostic in that case as well. I'm an agnostic, pantheist, pagan, polytheist, whatever. There's also a new term I learned today from the Wikipedia article, which is autotheism. And I have a little bit of this, a little bit. The part, not the part that says I think I am a god, but the part of it that says that I believe deity is also within us. Deity is also within us, and to a certain extent, we have a duty to not to become divine or to become perfect, like the Wikipedia article says, but I believe that part of my path personally is seeking to embrace my divinity and my connection to divinity and to the universe. So depending on how you read that, autotheism might be in there. This isn't something that was brought up in, it's not a theism thing, but it's related to how you see the world, and that is animism. So what do we have here? These are a bunch of words that you could call me. Let me sort them out here. Hold on. Hold on, I've got a full deck. <laughs> We're gonna edit this out. So here are a bunch of terms relating to views of deity that you could potentially use for my worldview. Do you understand why it's difficult for some people now? So now, what I'm gonna do is choose for you the things that I actually identify with. I'm an animist. I believe that everything has a soul, an essence, plants, inanimate, stuff like that. I, I think part of this applies, but I don't identify with autotheism. I'm letting that one go. I'm letting it go. I am a pantheist. I... I think I'm a panentheist, technically, but it's one of those things where I don't want to get too technical, so I, I keep this, but I keep it with this. Pantheism. I don't identify as a non-theist, particularly. I don't identify as an agnostic, even though there are a lot of things that I admit that I don't know. I don't know. I don't pretend to know. But that's not how I identify. I do not identify as a deist. Letting that go. I do not identify as an atheist. I identify as a soft polytheist. Symbolic polytheist, archetypal polytheist. Because, going back to what I was saying before, you could call me an archetypal theist. You could call me a symbolic theist. You could call me that. It doesn't answer how many gods I believe in. There's two things we're talking about. How many and in what way. That's how. That's in what way. That's how many have to answer both questions. This is how I identify for the most part. So I don't identify with this. I identify as a theist. I identify as a theist, an animist, a soft, symbolic, archetypal, whatever, whatever, polytheist, a pantheist, panentheist. I identify as a pagan, a Unitarian Universalist, and a witch. These are the labels that I choose to hold. And the only one that you really need to worry about is this one. My name is Kara. I'm your Tuesday host here on The Pagan Perspective. And until I see you next time, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.